All right, this is the last video. This is Horner, and this is work and potential energy. And remember, we're still talking about conservation energy and work. This is part six. So uh, this is super important. And I know that you're going to just sit and kind of listen for a while, but I think that's OK, too. It's very important that you understand a force for which work done on a particle as it moves from an initial to a final position is independent of the path followed is a conservative force. So there's two types of forces we're going to talk about, conservative and non-conservative forces. Conservative forces is where um, you have the path is independent. doesn't matter how I get there, okay? So if I lift a box, it doesn't matter whether I pick it up a little bit, come back down, pick it up again, and I kind of make this kind of funny looking thing, and it gets here, the amount of energy that I've had to use to do that is just right here. So that is my change in my energy. So here it has picked up this much potential energy due to gravity. And it doesn't matter the path that I take. So we call that a uh, conservative force. So that's pretty easy to do. I'll let you read through the rest of this. Um, a force for which the work is not independent of the path is called a non-conservative force. So for example, if I um, am pushing a box, so I'm looking from the top down, looking from the top down, and I start the box right here, and I move the box over here, and the box goes here, and then I do it again. But this time, I scoot the box along the floor, and I go all the way this way, and then come over here. The work that I did here, work one, and the work that I had to do here, work two, those are not equal. So work one is much less than work two. Why? Because my path is much longer and I had to have some sort of uh, something trying to keep me from getting from point one to point two. So typically that's friction or drag. Uh, so most things that, that we do are going to be conservative and then when we do non-conservative just remember you're working against something. Um, if I, for example, this is theirs, uh, if I start here and end up here, because I'm going along a straight line, uh, because the friction is working in this direction, uh, and because my distance is not as long as it is here, I actually have to do more work having it go this longer path than I do on this sh shorter path. So be careful that you're always looking to see, is it a non-conservative or is it a conservative force? Um, really important that you notice the difference between the two. Uh, so let's talk about how that relates to mechanical energy. So if a conservative force uh, does work, then uh, non-conservative forces uh, do work in C. So we're going to make WC for conservative forces and WNC for non-conservative. So the work done by all the forces in the system is going to be equal to WC plus WNC. So that's the conservative plus the non-conservative. The change in a system's kinetic energy, or delta K, should be equal to that network. Uh, because remember, when you push something along the floor, uh, it gains speed, but it also might lose a little bit of energy due to uh, friction. So here we've got the conservative forces, okay? And that's going from our initial to our final position, plus all of the non-conservative forces going from the initial to the final position. Uh, the work that a conservative force uh, does can be associated with potential energy. Uh, with this, the equation we have here becomes delta K plus delta U is equal to the change in that mechanical energy. Uh, and that's equal to the work done by a non-conservative force. So uh, we can see that mechanical energy is conserved if there are no non-conservative forces. So basically your delta E mech, so this is your total mechanical energy, is equal to zero if, and only if, our work due to non-conservative forces like friction and heat is also equal to zero. Otherwise we're going to lose or sometimes you'll gain energy. Uh, if I want to find the force from potential energy, uh, the way that I do it basically is just say the work done by that force as it's traveling to another 
position uh, is that original position plus that change in position. And so that's equal to the force uh, along that line times the change in our position. For uh, F being a conservative force, the object's potential energy as it moves through this delta S changes by delta U, and that's equal to negative W, so that's the work as we move here along, and we go from S to S plus delta S, uh, and that's equal to negative Fs delta S. So if you rewrite this, you're going to get the force is equal to the negative change in the energy divided by the change in position. So if our limit uh, change in S is zero, we can find the force at position S is going to be Fs is equal to, sorry about the limit here, so we've got a limit of delta S moving to zero. We're not going to go past that. So that's negative delta U over delta S. And we know that that is equal to negative DU over DS. And I think we spoke about that a little bit when we were talking uh, in uh, section five. So here's kind of a cool thing that you'll see. Uh, in the figure, we can see that the force on the object is negative because the derivative of the potential energy position curve has a slope that is negative. So here, um, I'm going to redraw that and cross that guy out. Fs is negative um, because the slope, oops, there we go, slope of u versus s is negative. Okay, so there's that negative slope. If I look at this curve, uh, you'll notice that uh, this is a potential energy curve, and it is uh, positive. So the slope of this is equal to mg. So u is equal to mgy. If I plot, if I plot the uh, potential energy due to gravity versus the position, uh, I will get a straight line, and that straight line will tell me what mg is, and mg is a force. So that is our line of force. Uh, which is pretty easy to see. So uh, pretty easy just to kind of look through there and see what's going on. The very last part of this is power. Uh, power is basically just at the rate at which uh, work is or energy is being transformed or transferred uh, or the rate at which work is done. So we know that power is equal to the change in the E of the system. So that is the system energy divided by the change in time. So there's our uh, derivative. Uh, the unit of the power is the watt, and if I want to know um, what the rate of work is, I just do dw over dt, or work over time. So really nothing new that we haven't seen before. If a particle does move through a very small displacement, we can say that that change in work, dw, is equal to the vector force times the cross product of dr, um, and so if we rearrange this, we're going to get dw over dt, and that's equal to force times the uh, dr over uh, dt. And the only reason I'm putting lines over these is just to show that they're vectors. Uh, dr over dt, uh, if you think about that, is velocity. So this guy right here is equal to our velocity. And because of that, power can equal force times the velocity. Um, and remember, we also said that if this is a dot product, um, then it's really F, V, and these we're going to make vectors here, F, V, cosine of the angle. So there is our equation for power. Um, there's also this equation for power, as well as, um, as the one that we originally had, which is down on the bottom. And that is the end of the notes for this entire unit.